farmers have every incentive, economic, environmental, and social, to do what's right with regard to nutrient management and water quality. The challenge is that no one out there is quite sure what the right things to do really are, at least not yet. This is where the extensive effort to revise the Ohio Phosphorus Risk Index, or P-Index, comes into play. Elizabeth Dayton is a soil scientist with the Ohio State University School of Environment and Natural Resources. The Ohio Phosphorus Risk Index is, is supposed to be a field scale estimate of the risk of phosphorus runoff. It's based on phosphorus risk factors for, from uh, water transport off the edge of the field, as well as farmer management practices that may impact runoff risk. So we have edge of field disco samplers monitoring runoff flow on an event basis. So every time runoff water starts flowing through the sampler, the sampler turns on and starts taking samples of the runoff as it flows through. The sampler measures the volume of water coming out and then it takes a sample of the water that's coming out and then all these tubes you see here are we analyze those samples for total phosphorus, dissolved phosphorus, total nitrogen, dissolved nitrogen, and sediment. This project wouldn't be possible without the cooperation of our participating farmers. The fact that they are, allow us to put the edge of field equipment on their property, they keep a excruciating level of detailed records that they share with us and then allow us to come onto their property to take uh, soil measures um, is the reason that this project can work. So what we're doing is we're relating all those in-field practices and in-field characteristics with what we see coming off the field. Through our field site selection and our incredibly cooperative farmers, we have a broad range of farmer management practices represented. So we have got a lot of long-term no-till, rotational tillage, uh, we have a couple of farmers that till a lot. We have a very broad range in soil test phosphorus. We have a broad range in um, fertilizer application methods. And I think that gives a breadth to the data. The way the phosphorus risk index runs now, and it will, I think even the revised index will be similar, is it looks at the transport and the source factors um, for risk of runoff. So each of those sub-factors is uh, weighted or scored individually, and then there's a total score for the field. So for each factor, we will be evaluating how that's weighted and scored so that the, the, each sub-factor is accurate, accurately reflects risk, and then the total score accurately reflects risk. So we will be delivering it to the farmer in its pieces per crop year and on average across their rotation. I'm hoping that we're going to at least have some preliminary results out by late this summer. We have the 2013 water data is in and we're in the process of uh, summarizing that. 2014 water data is imminent and we will add that into the summary. Um, so I think by the end of the summer we will have at least that much to give at least some preliminary recommendations. Um, we are requesting a three-year extension on the project so that we can have more than just two water data years. So then we'll see the farmer's entire rotations more than once. And then also we, are, we have other projects going on that are looking more specifically at some best management practices that then can also be integrated into the P-Index. And also there's the work that Dr. Steve Coleman is doing to revise the Tri-State Fertility Guidelines. The P-Index uses the Tri-State Fertility Guidelines. So as he's improving that, it will add improvements to the P-Index. And that work is in its first year. The revised P index will can be almost a defensive tool for the farmer so they can know how am I doing, how am I doing in relation to how other farmers are doing, and if there's areas where they can do an improvement, they would see that through their all their sub values and their final score where maybe they can improve.